All right, thank you so much for staying with the Monday Report. You're just in time for the town hall session. Come at the moment, come at the hour. This is the moment of truth. We're taking a scorecard of the Sakaja administration. 159 days later, they came into office with a promise to make Nairobi work. Does it work? At Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Monday Report. That is the question we're going to pose to them in just a bit. Let me introduce my guest really quick. His Excellency Sakaja Arthur Johnson is here, Nairobi Governor. Thank you so much for making time. Karibu Sirio. Asante sana. Yeah, thanks for having us on your show. Thank you very much for coming. Yes. His Excellency Njeroge Mushiri is here, Deputy Governor Nairobi. Asante sana for making time. Thank you very much. You're welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And more than 70 people in the audience from different categories and different cadres of business, border border riders, hotel owners, everyone who has questions to pose the governor, this is their moment. And we're also expecting to hear from you at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. Governor, I'll start with you. Yes. Thank you for inviting us into City Hall, first of all. Karibu. So, in your manifesto, yes. titled Let's Make Nairobi Work, and a city of order and dignity item one, yes. you promised Nairobians to deliver clean and safe water for all households. Yes. This is yet to happen, Governor. How far are you with the plans? Thank you. Um, water is a necessity. Uh, we've had problems for a long time. Many of them are systemic issues. We promised that we shall deliver clean water. Um, and I remember you know, explaining to Nairobians the challenge we've had with water, uh, three challenges. Number one, the actual quantity of water coming into Nairobi. Since 1997, we'd never developed new sources. So you had uh, um, Kikuyu Springs giving us just 1% of our water, 4,000 cubic meters. You have Riru Dam, then you have Sasumwa giving us 11% of our water from Jambini. And then you have uh, Ndakaine, which was the biggest source um, giving us uh, around 84% of our water, all in total giving us 525 million liters per day. The need in Nairobi is 850 million liters per day. What have we done in the meantime? One, we've uh, accelerated the Northern Collector Project, and this is thanks to the president. You know, the president has really been a good support because, um, you know, that line coming down from uh, Maragua, from Moranga County, the issue was, uh, you know, acquisition of land, with NLC, and between the president, myself, and the NLC chairman, we've been able to sort out a lot of those way leaves. The money is now with Treasury to be able to pay them, and possibly by the end of February, we'll get an extra 140 million liters of water. Now, that 140 million liters of water will mean that areas in Nairobi that have never received water or have not got it indicates you're talking about Karen, you're talking about Langata, areas in Kayole. Um, areas in uh, CBD, Kamkunji, that should be getting water daily and doesn't get, gets maybe once uh, a week, will now see an increase in the water. Yeah. Even as we do that, we're thinking of more sources. So we have Karimenu Dam, um, we have Northern Collector 2 that we want to start immediately. And so we're on track in that because that water was to come at the end of next year and it's coming before, you know, end of February, early March of yeah. this year, we'll have that extra water. Yeah. The second issue, of course, has been uh, cartels, you know. So because of the lack of uh, uh, you know, constant water flowing, we have very high uh, numbers of non-revenue water, around 46%. Um, now, once we have this extra water, because what happens is you find that people have blocked water in certain places, and uh, you see water bowsers roaming freely. And I always say water bowsers are not a sign of success in water. Once we have that, we're going to put in the SCADA technology. So SCADA technology is a system using technology, IT, in the pipes that I can check on my phone. If Trevor has cut the water off in Langata, I will see where it has been cut. And so we'll be able to deal with those uh, water cartels. Additionally, we're talking about water harvesting, um, recycling of water for use for commercial purposes. Um, so th there will definitely be a big improvement um, yeah. in, in the issue of water. And we are grateful uh, to the national government that has worked closely with us because we've kept pushing um, Nairobi water uh, and, and, and Athi water and of course, uh, hand in hand with the president to make sure that Nairobians will now start receiving that water. So yeah. we count that as one of the successes because we would still be facing the same problem towards, you know, for the rest of this year and going into, into, into next year. Yeah, so end of Feb, there might be some light at the end of the tunnel, but there are allegations that these water bowsers that you refer to in the cartels themselves reside within City Hall. Is that what you found out? It doesn't matter where they reside, they will have no business because we'll be able to support. You know, the physical uh, levers, you know, the pipes that are being, you know, shut off, you can't keep chasing people physically. You must use technology. Um, and, 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 and any interference on the infrastructure of water 
we have agreed uh, that that will be taken as a national security threat. Because it is, it is not fair and there's no dignity for people, especially in our informal settlements, paying more than 50 times the amount for water than those in you know, the upwardly mobile areas, whether it is Mudaiga, uh, uh, you know, Kilimani, ETC, yet in, in the slums in Madare, they're paying 50 times more. So definitely we have to enforce, and enforcement will be very important. I know people have compared our, our water non-revenue to countries like Uganda. Uganda has 25, 26%, but that's mainly because of the terrain, you know, because it is hilly, because much of what we're even measuring is, is, is the air you know, that's going through that. There have been areas with water network, with the pipes, but nothing coming for decades. They will see a change okay. um, very soon. All right. Yeah. Let me bring in DG on this. DG, I know this is in your really doorstep, really. Under the city of order and dignity, still item two under order. You are both meant to decentralize the city into five boroughs for focus service delivery, north, east, west, south, and central. Why has that delayed? Yeah, thank you. I, I don't think it is delayed. Uh, what we need to do is uh, to implement that. Uh, we need to align the budgets and the laws with the, with the, with the things that uh, we need to do. There are existing laws that we need to, to put it uh, to use, but also there are certain uh, administrative activities that we need to carry out. But having said that, we've already done the preliminary works. We have had legal opinions provided. We've had our physical planning people look at uh, how do we divide up this uh, uh, city into five barrows. And a lot of that preliminary work has gone on, and now it's for us to once we've aligned our budgets to the borough setup, is to implement with the next uh, planning cycle. So how will you fit your budget around it? Because then it means you have to give money to all these five boroughs. Yourselves have a recurrent expenditure that is way beyond what you can handle. I, th I think we can, uh, we can do that because one of the things that we are doing is uh, improving on uh, revenue collection and we've been doing very, uh, very uh, um, concerted efforts in that area. Uh, in addition, of course, you know the boroughs are aligned to the sub-counties and uh, to the wards, which already we finance in certain activities under the boroughs and sub-county uh, program. So I don't think that uh, we will have very di different uh, uh, um, requirements for financing to that extent. What we shall have is a lot more part, uh, citizen participation because we shall bring in the citizens, the resident organizations in the management of uh, these boroughs. And therefore, we will find that uh, devolution has gone down uh, a further uh, level uh, out of City Hall and down to the various, uh, the five boroughs that we have set up. Yeah. Governor, before I open the floor to questions, because I promised the audience that they'll get a chance to ask their leaders questions, one of the other biggest issues in the city has always been mobility yes. and the issue around traffic congestion. You said that you'd build a city metro commuter light rail yes. and cut down traffic congestion by 80%. This morning I was still stuck in traffic. Yeah. As, you know, and, and as we've always said, I remember during the debate, I was asked, what do you do in, in this short time? We said, look, there's no quick fix uh, for the city. We've had uh, derelict systems for, for years, even for decades. And so some of these things, you know, you, you, you count the progress that we've made towards that. Now, the first thing we've been able to do, um, number one, is to set up the first county uh, traffic and safety committee. The law provides for that, but no county had been able to do that. In fact, the law provides for many things that no county had ever been able to, to, to take use of, including in the issue in the area of security. Um, but we've set that up. We've had discussions with uh, different partners. Um, uh, I am the vice chair of the council of Namata. We've had these discussions with the CS of uh, you know, transport that we must have a metro in this city. You've seen our efforts about the congestion, um, bringing in BRT. I've shared photos of some of the you know, uh, electric buses that we now have been able to put into our budget. Remember, um, just up until uh, late in uh, December, we never had a budget that we were working with. You know, we were on vote on account, which means you can only spend 50% uh, of your recurrent budget. We have that in line. And so th th there's a lot of attention now coming into Nairobi. We have the Millennium Challenge Corporation that is giving us around 60 million US dollars for a threshold program about mobility. Because look, God has gifted us as Nairobi with the gift of geography. From Nairobi, you can get to New York in 14 hours. You can get to London in eight hours. You can get to uh, Dubai in five hours, and then you come and get stuck in traffic for four hours. It is the only global capital where public transport is completely private. So we've had many meetings, in fact, in this same room with more than 450 circles of matatus, and I'm, I can see some of them um, represented here. We've agreed about how to relocate some of them from the central business district, and while doing that, you know, creating alternatives. So if I drop you off at, uh, at Fig Tree, 
there must be a shuttle to bring you into town. If you're dropped off at Green Park, there must be a shuttle to bring you into the CBD, and that goes around. We must have the tram. And so that is ongoing, and I'm very glad that the resources are actually available. Many people are interested in doing the PPP for that, which is public-private partnerships, so that Nairobi can move. Yeah. You know, we waste so much money um, stuck in traffic, and that must change. So difficult decisions must be made. I know there's been resistance in some quarters. Yes, these difficult decisions you're talking about got you at loggerheads with the deputy president himself. No, they're not loggerheads. I think um, it's, just, it's just everyone understanding their mandate. Um, and, and, and carrying everybody along because, you know, change, change is not easy. But I promise you, this is the only time we have to, to sort out this city. If we don't do it in these five years, there'll be anarchy. And so we campaigned knowing very well that there are many things that once we start doing might not be popular, but there are things that must be done in this city. And so holding true to that promise, you'll never govern this city if you're trying to be popular every day. You won't. Because everybody has an opinion on everything. So just respectfully agreeing, you know, um, that, that this must change. We must look at Nairobi in terms of what it must be, not in terms of what it has always been. You know, without victimizing anyone, any section of the community, bringing people on board, yeah. public participation, carrying them along. Yeah. Where the concerns will listen, you know, and some of those concerns were, look, um, this area you're taking us to has no offices because normally we, we send parcels and like, okay, that makes sense. Let's put up for you certain offices. If you go there today, you'll find uh, a lot of the passengers are very happy because, you know, some of the areas they used to be dropped at, uh, when uh, my kanjo goes, they don't know if you're a tout or a passenger, you know, you're bundled into the, you know, those pickups. Um, there's mugging, there's the security, there's lighting and all of that. And so we're improving it. Everything is constant improvement. Where we've made mistakes, we've said, okay, yes, this could be done differently. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're open enough to say, okay, yes, we can change that. But ultimately, we must have a mass transit system that moves Nairobians from point one to point B. Why do we all have to, to terminate in the CBD? Before you take number eight, which becomes number 42, from Dandora to Kibra, you know, we have all those interconnecting lines. And remember, Trevor, a lot of money, almost 400 million shillings, was spent uh, planning, uh, you know, our, our, our new plan, yeah. you know, with the JICA and the city council then removed 100 million shillings. But those plans have been just in people's desks. Yeah. So we said, look, let's make the tough decisions. Okay. Let's do what must be done. This is a global capital that everybody wants to be part of. And if you get it moving, yeah. everybody will come to Nairobi. We see many people walking to work. And I've had people saying, oh, because people are walking, let's just do more of walkways. It's good to have walkways, but they're not walking because they like it. Yeah. But they can't afford transport. If it rains, you find uh, prices hike times five, times three. You need predictability in a capital. You need someone to know that at 7 a.m., I know there is the, the train that passes here. I know there's a bus that passes here, whether it has 10 people or one yeah. person. And I'll be able to get to point A to point B on time. Okay. That for us is not negotiable. So when is the ground breaking? for this commuter light rail. You just said that the papers are stuck. In well, we've done the groundbreaking for the uh, station already um, at uh, Railway City, together with the British government. That has already been done. Um, once that has been done, of course, it is attracting a lot of um, support. On Thursday, I'm meeting with the French um, AFB, um, AFD, who are actually supporting Line 3 of the BRT. We've already put in uh, our budget 125 million shillings for buses. That has been passed by the assembly uh, a few weeks ago. Things are going on, okay. you know, so, so these are changes that you will see slowly. One line will be open, another line, there's commuter rail between the uh, railway city and the airport yeah. that also is being funded by the same group. Um, and, 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 and now we've seen a lot of the players saying, look, you don't have to use county money yeah. for this. You don't have to use national government money for this. We can actually come, put the infrastructure, bill people for the tickets. Of yeah. course, we have to subsidize it a bit. Every country, there's no country where rail is not subsidized. Okay. You have to subsidize it a bit. And then in 15 years, you build, operate, and you transfer. And those in the sector yeah. of transport can come in also and own shares. You can own locomotives mm -hmm. with your circles. You can be part of it. So it is not either or. It's not a competition. There is no train that is going to drop someone at their doorstep. Okay. You know, so there's a last mile connectivity. Yeah. And I'm very glad by the support that we're getting from a lot of our partners. I, I, I'd have mentioned them, but I don't know if they have been <laughs> for advertising. <laughs> so, but so. a lot of support is coming in. Yeah. And I want to assure the people of Nairobi that Nairobi will move. Okay. We'll have a mobile uh, city. When? 
when is the question? This is a gradual thing, but at what point do you think the impact is going to be felt and the system will be in place? Within this year, people will start seeing those changes. Okay. Within uh, the year of 2023, as I've told you already, the items that we are uh, funding have already been put in our budget. Um, the Council of Namata is sitting. I've told you I'm sitting on Thursday with the, with the, with the French. Okay. And, and those changes will be seen. You know, okay. it's, it's not a thing that is done instantly, um, but we, we launch different projects as right. we come along. Okay. Remember, we have a plan that uh, cuts across different sectors. So you have the bus rapid transit, you have the, uh, uh, the light rail, you know, you have the shuttles, you have our regulations around the uh, border borders and, uh, and, 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 and matatus. All of those mm -hmm. will come hand in hand. So okay. by end of this year, there will definitely be a massive change All right. in how we move in Nairobi. All right. yeah. DG, this directly impacts on trade, which is really your forte. And you are meant to build 20 new markets and deliver a digital, unified, single business permit. How far are we with that? Uh, yes, um, on the markets, we've identified the locations and the sites where we are going to build these markets. We've also um, had the prototypes done uh, in terms of the designs of these markets. We want markets that uh, people can use, people can actually access easily, and people feel uh, are, are amenable to the kind of products and, and goods and, and uh, services they're offering in those, uh, in those markets. So we've had very uh, extensive consultations, both with the, the stakeholders as well as people who can do the designs, including the ministry. And, and uh, we're in the final stages of uh, onboarding uh, the relevant uh, suppliers of these services so that we are able then to break ground in some of these markets. Uh, and we are going to be able to, to deliver this year, we are going to, to break uh, ground for five of these new markets uh, so that we can then uh, uh, continue that phase into the next financial year because, of yeah. course, uh, we have to ensure that we raise the relevant uh, funds. So that process is going on, is going on uh, pretty well. In addition to that, uh, you know, we created a, um, a hustle opportunities uh, directorate, uh, which we are using to manage uh, the people who do informal trading in the, in the, in the city. And, and this is uh, going to help us decongest some of the parts that we have seen are congested in the city, along with the markets, of course. Part of the reason why people are in, in the streets is because for the longest time, we have not been building markets. Population has been growing, and they have nowhere to trade, so naturally they filter off into their streets. So once we put up these markets, and then we develop the, uh, uh, I won't call them back streets, because they are streets which are less used by vehicular traffic, we should be able to get a lot of these people in formal trading spaces that they can identify, pay for, work in specific time timelines, and be able to have decency in the way they do their business. So all that piece of work is going on. Okay, so you're projecting this end of this year? Yes, we should, we should have at least yeah. the, 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 the street trading people should be there in another uh, three, four uh, weeks in terms of uh, location in some of the places. Yeah. Of course, we are doing many streets, but we are going to start uh, uh, gradually. Uh, on the markets, we'll probably complete them. We will complete the first ones in the, sec in the next financial year, but we'll start this financial year. Okay. And the single business permit? The single business permit, uh, we have a lot of work going on, and uh, today you can actually pay all your uh, licenses using star 647 hash, uh, and you can also go onto a web portal and be able to actually pay your, your licenses. This uh, is a continuing effort. There's, you know, we keep identifying areas that we have not been charging, and we have not been levying any fees, and therefore we are going to keep improving this to make sure that uh, we get uh, every single payment uh, done. Because when we talk to our stakeholders again, they want to be able to pay us at the point at which they serve. They don't want to come into City Hall, they don't want to leave their businesses, they don't want to travel, they don't want to get engaged with the, uh, uh, you, know, you know, processes that would otherwise uh, limit the efficiency of their businesses. And that is what we're targeting to do. So we're very confident that uh, we're on the right track, we're very confident that we have the right approach and we're in the right direction in delivering uh, everything that we promised our, our, our uh, voters. All right. Let me open. You, you want to jump in, Governor? Yeah. must be emphasized. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you so much, DG. We're the first county. Actually, we're the first government, <laughs> because this is national and county governments, that has fully digitized all payments. In the last 10 years of devolution, no county has done that. Um, and, and, and there have been attempts, counties have resisted it. Today in Nairobi, there is no single service out of all our 163 revenue streams that you pay for in cash. We have the star 647 hash, you pay through your mobile phone, we have our bank accounts. And you see what that does, it increases our accountability. Number two, 
to fight corruption, you must reduce human interaction with cash. And people have said that. We've had a lot of revenue leakage, you know, in the past, where cash would be cutted off, you know, in, in cash, you know, in bags. But today in Nairobi, all payments, whatever it is, from wherever you are, you should be able to pay digitally. It's a system, of course, we will keep improving. But that, I think, is, is, is really one of the, the big highlights of what we've already been able to do. We promise we do it, and we've done it. Um, now, that goes hand in hand with what we're saying about the barrows. It's not an extra budget, but just bringing together. The person thinking about roads in Kayole should not be preoccupied with Westlands. You know, the person focused in Kawangware should not be thinking about South Sea. And that's where we bring in the area resident associations to come in this budget cycle, because we've put the barrows in our CIDP, which is the County Integrated Development Plan. You will be able to sit within your estates, within your communities, within your constituencies to say this is our priority in Langata. These are priority in Dandora. And you'll find it's very different. Nairobi may be small geographically, 696 square kilometers, but the diversity in priority is amazing. Okay. So that's what we've done. And, 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 and the use of technology is really helping us you know, get, get that through. OK. Yeah. Let me open the floor to questions. And I want to recognize the presence of the CECs. The CECs are also here, so any question can be handled by them as well. Let's see the microphone right in front. Start with your name and pose your question. We'll take the questions in sets of threes. So we'll start with you, it, Governor and DG, you're allowed to write them down so that you can answer them. Yes, start, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Trevor, and uh, thank you for this forum. My name is Ken Onyango, uh, the chairman for Eminent uh, Boda Boda. First and foremost, I want to congratulate His Excellency the Governor because of the opportunity that he has given the Boda Boda in this city. And for the first time, Trevor, in this city we have never had in all the successive government, uh, the county government, we were never given spaces where we can actually do our job. And uh, the county government, uh, led by His Excellency the Governor, has given us spaces. So only now we are working on uh, the panel beating and the last stages of making sure that there is a complete flow. And uh, the only question that maybe I'll pose to His Excellency is that uh, if we can actually help us fast track the process, of making sure that uh, the process of uh, identifying and uh, marking those stages and working on the plan that he had on dividing the county of Nairobi in five barons so that we'll be able to also control okay. the motorcycle that are coming into the city all so right. that not everyone coming from all the 17 sub-counties coming to do uh, their job in the city. All because right. in due time we may find ourselves having uh, a problem that is being experienced in Uganda. But a quick one, okay. uh, Bona Trevor. Yes, briefly. Uh, I stay in, in Njiru, and uh, Governor Sakaja campaigned on a platform of helping also the youths who are sitting on a biggest time bomb in this country and in this county on the issue of unemployment. Right now, as you speak, the other day, the president uh, expressed himself on the issue of Kenya power. Uh, uh, totally putting people in blackout. And majority of our youths staying in Njiru, we've stayed there for one year without power. Okay. Those that have salon, those that have uh, uh, the Kinyozi shops, uh, those that are selling water, they can, uh, we don't have uh, 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 how they can actually pump water from the boreholes okay. because there is no electricity. All right. And the bills that Kenya Power gives for you to be connected to power yeah. is completely fictitious. Now, how is the governor yeah. going to help us in coordination? Because the president said Kenya Power, together with county government, should coordinate together okay. so that we can see how power can be restored right. in, our, in our areas. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Let's keep your questions brief, please. There's a microphone back there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, governor Wetu, uh, Deputy Governor Wetu, Mgeni Wetu Trevor, uh, Waheshimiwa, Si sisi wenye wako hapa na wananchi wenzangu hamjambo na tujambo ah uh, mimi naitwa Winnie Kuria kutoka Embakasi West ah uh, jambo yangu ni kuhusu affordable housing juzi tulikuwa kwenda kupigia makofi affordable housing mpya ambazo zinajengwa La, na zimejengwa pangani na zikajengwa ngara lakini ah uh, ndio nauliza governor wetu atatusaidia namna gani sababu inashikana na national 
uh, sababu hizo nyumba hata wakati sisi walalahoi tunaenda kupiga makofi wakati kuna ground breaking uh, wakati nyumba zimefika juu ni za walalahai uh, kuna hiyo deposit ya hizo nyumba eh, governor wetu asante sana kwa sababu for the first time nimeona governor anaye shirikiana na hustlers ati wanafika kwa meza yako na wanasaidika kwa saa hii since you are seated there nina uli, mimi swali yangu ni hii hatuwezi ondolewa hiyo deposit irudishwe kwa malipo okay ndio pia mlala ha, mlala hoi aweze ku acquire hizo nyumba za affordable housing all right sababu zikiitwa affordable housing unapata si haslas ndio wanasaidika okay. sisi kazi yetu ni kuchapa makofi Sawa, nyumba zinaanza zinachukua zinapata wenyewe right. tunaomba uende utusaidie sawa kuwe na part ingine eh, ya walala hoi okay tuondolewe hiyo deposit iwekwe ndani asiondolewe ati ipote iwekwe ndani ya malipo sawa sawa mama ndio pia sisi sawa. tuweze kupata hizo manyumba haya asante there's a microphone back there yes go ahead thank you so much my name is nyakundi because health is a, a very critical sector in government allow me to ask three questions Trevor. very quickly yes number one ever since governor you came to into office we have had complaints about mama lucy I can't mama mama you talking about mama lucy hospital. slightly ever, louder sir ever since uh, governor sakaja's government came to office we have had we had complaints about mama lucy okay uh, i want to ask governor nowadays we we have no complaints about mama lucy and the services given there what did you do to ensure that uh, this you fast track the, the process number two it is in the public domain that government doctors ab, uh, abscond duties and run you know kiosk of clinics in terms of private sectors what will you do to ensure that they serve nairobians number three our uh, most of our facilities in nairobi sorry you said two questions sir three trevor very briefly most of our facilities in nairobi are old some of them are not equipped okay governor what will your adm administration do to ensure that nairobians uh, get uh, well facilities equipped and have medicine okay Sante. all thank right you. let's hold the questions there for now you can answer them really quick okay governor and dg thank There's you so much on ken yeah. border border space is being marked yes i'll i'll, I'll take a few and uh, i'm sure dg will uh, respond uh he'll add what i what, what i don't have um Ken, thank you so much for, for, your, for your question um, on Boda Boda. Remember, when we got into office, we, the first thing we did was to release almost 3,000 impounded Boda Bodas that had been impounded for small traffic infractions. The harassment of Boda Boda riders in this city was like it's a crime to be on a Boda Boda or to be a Boda Boda rider. And we said, kazi ni kazi. Every hassle matters. They're also trying to feed their families. And uh, I think I remember you at that function at uh, uh, Dagoretti um, in, our, in our yard. What we've agreed um, and, and we started the process was that number one, we must register. And we are, we, we've done it. You know, we've registered border borders into the circles. Um, we're able to know this is a circle registered in this or this other sub county because you must be organized to be recognized. The second thing, of course, we've said within the CBD, because Boda Bodas were banned. It's as if getting into the CBD is a matter of privilege, you know? And we said, no, we must uh, mark specific places where they will, uh, you know, be able to drop and to pick. And everybody knows if I want to get a Boda Boda, if it's along Kenyatta Avenue, it is this spot or this spot. It's a process that they have been involved in. They have been doing the meetings and they presented to us uh, a report. I know they wanted around, uh, is it 60 or so spots and we've come down, when we're negotiating with them, yeah. those spots will be marked and no one will be harassed if you're dropping them. And it's not just border borders, Uber drivers. Uber drivers as well keep getting harassed. Last week I sent a video to my chief officer of compliance, uh, Tony Kimani, of one of our officers actually soliciting for a bribe and they were recorded. You know, if you drop somebody in town, uh, you know, before what would happen is one of my officers would get into your vehicle 
and they would harass you. If you're picking, they'd harass you. And we harass you for picking and dropping, yet we've not given you the place to pick and drop. And so that process has gone on very well. We've agreed even with Uber and some of the digital hailing uh, uh, you know, companies on the specific spots where they're going to put, we're going to co-brand. Yeah. But you know, if I'm in the CBD and I need to get an Uber, it is outside parliament or it is on Moy Avenue, it is at this and that spot. Of course, there are bigger problems that they have, uh, the rate. When you get in, 25% goes to another country, um, the commission has been high, uh, the minimum rate has been too low. And in the Senate, I had pushed those regulations. They are ready. They're with the CS, and that's one of the things we're doing as part of that uh, committee. Um, so, so Ken, that, that is actually done um, from our side. We're, we're just now to Gazette because, you know, we, now we must do public participation. So that people also agree with us. But I'm sorry, there won't be 60 uh, bus stops. There'll be a bit fewer so that we can have order. And once we do that, please help us. Wale wanakati, watu watatu katikati ya magari, watu waine, hapo ndo ukore inaingia. If you're not at that same spot, because we must have order in the city. If you're not at that spot, you're supposed to be, what a, we deal with you, because then you become a threat. Okay. The other question on unemployment, uh, Ken, you know, it's a big issue, it's the biggest challenge. All surveys done in Nairobi show that unemployment is the biggest problem. Our biggest threat to security is not al Shabaab or terrorism. It is millions of disillusioned, disengaged young people who have the qualifications but are in their estates. We're doing a number of things, and I know he's asked specifically about um, electricity. The ease of doing business will help the private sector be able to actually provide many of the jobs. Government does not necessarily be the one to employ people. But once you create an enabling environment, um, reducing the licenses to one, um, the issue of compliance, that there's predictability. Any business knows that this is what it takes to operate. It is not today I have this inspector, tomorrow somebody else on fire, the next day somebody else on something else. We'll be able to provide that environment. The issue you raise specifically on power is something that we've really been uh, fighting. Not just in Jiru. If you go to Landi Maui, yeah. there was that problem. And Kenya power, power is a national function, but of course as a county we must be involved. And you saw the other day with the president. Yeah. Landi Maui, we have an entire ward, hospital ward in Madari, has had no electricity for more than a year. If you look at um, uh, like, like where we were the other day um, in Isili South, uh, Kiambio, um, uh, if you look at uh, Bayafra, they have had that challenge. And now what we did, we called Kenya Power. We sat here with Engineer, engineer Muli yeah. and his team. And we told them, you don't switch off people's electricity because of illegal connections. Because really, you can't beat them. And the person who is suffering is not the person good doing the illegal connection. Because they probably even, maybe don't even stay there. It is a normal Mwanainchi who wants to pay. So bring these people together, register them yeah. as your distributors, negotiate a lower tariff with EPRA, Give them the power, let them pay, and let them distribute. Give them better materials. Yeah. A lot of the fires we find in Nairobi are because of illegal connections, because of using substandard materials. And that process is going well, and I'm very happy the president uh, affirmed that okay. in Kamkunji um, yeah. uh, the other day. Um, maybe the, 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 the Swali, uh, Bikuria, or Mbakasi West, Mambo, your housing, Hapo, Ndiotuko, Naumona, Tumezindua, Miradikada, Kule, Kibira, uh, kuna zile tumezindua shauri moyo kuna zile za mukuru ili pali mtu anaishi kama ulikuwa unalipa elfu tano ama elfu sita uwezo kupata nyumba ambayo kuna maji kuna heshima na kuna hadhi pali ambapo pia unajua siati wewe we na watoto wako mume the difference ni net umeka ama bed sheet hapo hakuna dignity um, na hii tunafanya pamoja na kuna zile za national government na kuna zile zito ambazo tunafanya vile tumesema ni ya kwamba Ukiangalia kama uh, high rise 1 na 2 kule majengo walitoa watu majengo slum wakawajenga hizo manyumba wakaingia watu walikuwa nalipa 1400 tano wakaweka kwa nyumba ya 1011 hawezi kulipa huyo mtu hujampatia affordable housing what is affordable to driver may not be affordable kwa mtu ambaye tayari analipa 1500 so what we've agreed ni ku extend repayment period ili uweze kulipa kitu karibu na ile ulikuwa unalipa kidogo kidogo in 20 years or 25 years, nyumba ikwe ni nyumba yako. Right. So kuna zile tunazindua zaidi. Okay. Mambo ya deposit, of course, kwetu, tunawana hakuna haja hiyo. Na ile abandon yu, tunafanya kule Islands. Tumesema kama uluko unaka kwa nyumba. Because people have lived there for years and for generations. And they have been paying. Now that we're coming to bring in abandon yu, 
if you have been sitting there card unapata inatolewa kwa mzazi inapatiwa mtoto mtoto mwingine anapata now even three generations yeah. that house will be yours you okay. will get a unit and you will pay um, service charge All right. maybe I let dg you... answer on health on and, health, I, and yeah. i can i can affirm it yes. but even itakuwa mami yeah, yeah, I think on the, um, on, the, on the health side, the key thing that we've done is actually reorganized how the, um, uh, the health function is managed. So we've created uh, um, a directorate that is managing uh, medical services, a, direct, a directorate that is managing uh, public health, and one that is managing the facilities. So that uh, uh, the challenges that you raise, that uh, maybe some of the staff are not able to uh, you know, shuffle between the various duties, we now have distinct streams of people working in those areas to be able to focus. So whoever is looking after the facilities, that's their job, and that's what they do. They deal with the, with the cleanliness of the, of the facility, the equipment in the facility, uh, the medicines and other stuff, the pharma and non-pharma uh, stuff in the, in the facility, and therefore the, 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 the doctors and the, and the clinical staff can have time to be able to manage uh, the patients, and therefore you get better uh, patient doctor contact type, which is one of the challenges that uh, that you raise, and I think that's what you've seen, uh, and that's what you've experienced uh, uh, in, in Mumalusi Hospital. But there's also a question on uh, whether government doctors run private clinics and rather old structures that are there right now. I think I think that's been a fairly complex uh, thing to manage because of historically what has happened in the past. But we would urge uh, all those who work for the county government. To, to focus a lot on serving in the hospitals in which they serve and probably not to get involved in too many of the uh, private activity because they get pulled away from their core duties. And that's part of the reason why we were addressing this. Obviously, we have specialist doctors who you can probably not confine in one, in one um, facility because the skills they have are unique and the skills they have are needed in different uh, uh, facilities. But uh, by and large, a lot of the uh, other medical practitioners, they would be able to actually do uh, a full day uh, job at the, at the facilities. All right. Yeah. Just let me add to that quickly, and yeah. thanks, DG. Um, one of the issues was that uh, hospitals were not being run as entities that should actually, and I don't use the word profitable, but that work, you know? And so what we've said is that our level five hospitals all, and we've agreed with the public service board, are going to have CEOs. So the same way Nairobi Hospital as a CEO, who does not necessarily have to be a doctor. The same way Aga Khan Hospital as a CEO, who's an administrator, knows how to manage. Uh, Mamalusi, Pumwani, Mbagathi, and Mutuini are going to have CEOs at the top. Number two, it is disheartening when you go to a hospital, you're treated, and then you're told, Endo dawa uko inje. Yeah. And much of it was about the supply chain. KEMSA has not been supplying us for a long time. We've sorted out uh, the issues with the KEMSA, we paid them 40 million shillings last week, and we've agreed on a repayment plan on the old pending debt that has been there. And so we have, we, no, now we're flagging off you know, huge supplies from KEMSA. We have a healthy information management system that we want to input. Many of our hospitals are not able to claim from NHIF, and so they're not able to run themselves. Okay. We've bought 233 computers that we put in all these hospitals so that they can have the e-claims yeah. for us to claim uh, um, uh, insurance. Now those doctors who are doing private business, and I've always defended my doctors, even when we've gone, because many of them, yeah. and they sign a Hippocratic oath, they take it. They want to serve the people, but you find they don't have the facilities and the equipment required. And you know, even many of them have gone through depression. Many of them are, you know, are saying, okay, I'm here, yeah. but I have nothing to serve. So I'm, saying, I'm providing what you require. Once you're working for the county government, yeah. decide. If you're working for the county government, these are the hours I need from you. Those are the hours you'll give the people of Nairobi. All right. What you do with your other hours, that is up to you. Okay. But the hours you have to give to the people of Nairobi, and you have amazing, amazing doctors okay. in the city, and you've seen that motivation. So maybe that is what Bwana Nyakundi has been able to, to experience there, and, 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 and you will see, you'll definitely see more of that. Finally, yeah. um, we had a, a serious hospital that was built using Nairobi money, and then it was handed over to the national government uh, by you know, the previous administration. Um, in uh, Korogosho, uh, just actually Karibangi North, bordering uh, Korogosho, um, called Mama Margaret Uhuru Hospital. We've been able to agree with the national government because it's a huge facility yeah. that has just been limited to being a pediatric facility. And so we're converting it first to a fully-fledged facility, yeah, a proper full level five yeah. that even adults can go to, general hospital, 
and then staffing it and putting the equipment that we require okay. and then now converting it back to the county. That will reduce by a long shot okay. the challenges in Mamalusi. All right. We've paid the pending bills of, 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 of a lot of you know, the expansion that was needed at Mamalusi. And so just with time, you will be able to see uh, health improving All right. with the city. Okay. I have to yeah. take a quick break here. When <laughs> Sorry. Back, I'm still just sending you back the questions. We'll allow you to ask as many questions as possible, but keep them brief. We'll try and squeeze in as many as we can. I see some of your questions also online. We'll pose some of them to the governor and the deputy governor, right? See you in just a bit.